How am I going to overcome that? Well, he overcame it by giving a new definition to sin. The definition was sin is not when you do bad things. Sin is when you don't believe. Sin is unfaith. When you don't believe, then of course you do bad things. But that's, that's beside the point. The sin was you didn't believe. So that you have a large group of people who see it that way. If I don't believe, I'm sinning. Well, I suggest that when you talk about belief in that way, you're not talking about belief. Belief is on account of something indicated to you that something was the case and you believe it. To give you an example, I met a man in South Africa, a medical doctor, and all medical men know about a thing they call a placebo. That is, when somebody's problems are mental, but it won't help to tell him that, you give him a pill that's made out of sugar. You tell him, take this pill, it'll help. Because he believes it's medicine, that his problem was in his mind anyway, he believes he's well when he takes the pill. That's how it works. This man, uh, this medical doctor, had a patient come to him, and the man said, there's a snake in my ear. Well, the doctor doesn't say, that's crazy. He didn't say that. He said, well, let's have a look. The man tips his head over, and he takes his instruments, he looks in his ear, and he says, ah, I see your problem. The man says, you mean you can help? He says, yes, I've got just what you need. Took an, uh, a little dropper. There's nothing in it but water. And he says, just lean your head over. And there's a couple of drops in there. And he says, that should take care of the snake. Sure enough, the man says, I'm cured. It's gone. And you see, it was in his mind to start with. And when he thought he was getting medicine, he thought he was cured. But suppose that somebody says to the doctor, I've got a pain in my head. And the doctor does all the examining he can. He says, look, there's nothing wrong with you. Your pain is in your imagination. But I'll tell you what I will do. I've got some pills here. Now, they're only made of sugar, but I want you to believe that they're medicine. And take these. Then the pain will go away. Believe. You can't do it. It won't work. You won't believe it. You might hypnotize yourself, I suppose. You sit there for two or three days and go without food and water and say, Pills are medicine, pills are medicine, then maybe you'll... That's not really belief. Belief is you put your trust in something, you have reasons in front of you, and you believe it. But it's not belief when you say, they tell me this is true, I will make myself believe it. That's not belief. And that's where you're asking, of course, for, for trouble. There's another point that should be thought carefully about, and I stress it to Muslims, man, and <laughs> because uh, very often I hear Muslims talking a great deal about faith. You know, the Quran doesn't say a word about faith. So you often find that in English translations, but it doesn't say anything about faith. It talks about Iman, which comes from an Arabic word that means confirmation. Your Iman is what you checked on, what you know for sure, or it's what you've at least thought about, looked into. And it grows all the time. Every time you find out a new thing, your E-man grows. The things you checked on grow. It doesn't say anything about blind faith, saying this is true, there's no proof, but believe it. No such thing in the Bible. But to systems built on faith, there's of course a, a great many problems. If faith is the key, well, the man who has it can't give it away. If faith is a thing God gives him, he can't give it to anybody else. As an example, if this, we just had another meeting. I don't know if some of you were just there and heard the same story, but <laughs> if so, excuse me. But to illustrate the point, a few years ago I had finished a meeting and I was about to leave after a talk and somebody pointed out somebody across the room. He said, you see this man over here, he's leaving in a few days to be a missionary to Pakistan. So I went over, talked to him. I said, um, what are you going to Pakistan for? He says, I'm going to take people there the proof that Jesus died for their sins. I said, like what? What proof do you have? And he opens up and he reads a passage of scripture and I said, well, now that proves a lot of things, but if you look carefully, it doesn't prove what you said. And that, you know, explain why, you know, one, two, three, four points. Said, that doesn't, technically, that doesn't prove what you said. And he saw that for a moment and says, yeah. Okay, no, this one. And he turns the page and he finds another verse. This, this is the proof. 
I read it again carefully. I said, now look, that still doesn't quite do the job. It proves a number of things, but it doesn't quite prove what you said yet. I said, yeah, that's true. Closed the book and he thought about it a minute and he said, oh, wait, wait, wait. He says, I don't mean I have proof, I have faith. <laughs> well, that's fine. That's his business. I'm happy for him. But say what you mean. See, advertise what you're selling. And if you don't have proof, but you have faith, then you have something you can't give anybody. Proof is something a human being can give to another human being. Say, here's the proof. But faith is the thing where you say, look, inside me is the proof, the faith. But you can't open up your heart. So you see this here? It's the faith. In fact, you can have a little bit. You can't do that. That's between you and whoever gave it to you. Doesn't, uh, not even to say this, this is a false thing you've got, but at least a person should think again about, well, what do I have? And is it something I can give somebody? Because otherwise we can, well, let's say we can <laughs> fool ourselves. I'll give you an example of a, well, a contrast. There's a famous American television preacher who tells the story on his broadcast sometime about how he got the commission from God to say the things he says. He said, it happened one morning. I was in my bathroom and I was shaving and the light flickered. And I said, God, is that you? And the voice said, yes, I want to tell you something. And they had a conversation while he finished shaving. Well, maybe that's true, but the point was the voice spoke to him and he believed it like that. Think about it. As many people have pointed out, if a voice spoke to you and said, this is God talking, how could you make that voice prove it to you? Are you going to ask him a hard question or something? What are you going to do? It's very difficult. A voice says, this is God talking. You say, wait a minute, I don't believe you. Quick, what's the square root of 144? And the voice says, 12. Hmm. Uh, maybe you knew that anyway. Let me see if I can think of another one. What are you going to do? Come up with some hard question you can't answer? Because any question that, that you can think of, well, a lot of people know the answer to it including this one, whoever it might be. So it's very hard to establish who is speaking to you. You have the example, look at the, the prophet, Muhammad. When an angel spoke to him for the first time, what did he do? Did he go running back into the city saying, it's a revelation, praise the Lord, God spoke to me. And he ran home to his wife because he was scared, he thought he was going crazy. For two years he worried about it. He asked, he discussed it, he examined it, he thought about it, he was worried he might be losing his mind or somebody's fooling him. You want to make sure that's really what it says it is. Isn't that a healthier attitude than somebody who, he heard a voice, said, well, it's God, nobody else can whisper inside me like that. It's just worth thinking carefully. <laughs> There's a second point that comes up. If everything is based on something that came into your heart, and that is, then it's not open to any test whatsoever. For people who say, my whole faith is a thing on the inside, I have to ask, see, well, is there anything that I could show you that if I could find it and show it to you, it would prove you're wrong? Well, of course not. There's no such thing. This faith is already in place. It's in here. In fact, saying there is no test. See, today, in the scientific community, they won't even listen to a person with a new idea unless he brings with his idea a way to prove that he might be wrong. He'll say, I believe this to be the case, but if I'm wrong, here's all you have to do to prove it. If he doesn't come with that falsification test, nobody bothers to listen to him. They're not interested at all. You have to give your idea and bring with it some way to say, now, if I'm wrong, look, try this and you'll see. That's how the whole Koran reads over and over again. It's got many statements in there saying, if this isn't a revelation, then here's one way you could prove that it isn't. Or you could do this, or find this, or show me this. You'll prove that it isn't a revelation. If it isn't, it comes with these tests built in. But that is a pretty <laughs> an impossible. It is an impossible thing to find in a system that is not open to that kind of thing. It's not open to any test. When people believe that way or they follow that kind of attitude, they may even think that it's something that they figured out themselves. I hear that from time to time people will say, look, 
everything else in life is object